Five common CPAP side effects, problems, and solutions. Hi, I'm Chris with AffinityHM.com, and I'm coming at you here from my bedroom. was just getting ready to go to bed and uh, wanted to come out here to you guys and talk about what I know that each and every one of you need to hear is the most common side effects and problems and solutions for your CPAP. So you may be new on CPAP. You may have used CPAP for many, many years, but you're going to see that these are the ones that uh, if you're especially new on CPAP, that you really need to find some solutions and find them quick. So we're going to go through the five uh, common CPAP side effects, problems and solutions. We're going to start with what I think is probably the, the least common of the five, although it's very, very common. Uh, the very first one would be, and this has actually shown up more over the most more recent years, is the number of wake awakenings. So you're waking up a lot because of the fact that you're using your CPAP machine. So this can be from because of some of the other problems that you're having that we're about to go over or well, the reason that I'm seeing this one more and more, I think, is because so many more people are, are on a very wide range of pressure. Now, with the machines that we have today, the APAP, the auto positive airway pressure machines, they automatically adjust. So if you're having a sleep study and maybe it's a sleep study at home uh, that, that you're having and uh, the doctor is just simply ordering a pressure, a wide range of pressure, like let's say four to 20. Well, that means that the machine is going to all the way through the night be looking for your pressure. It's going to be trying to find if you have an apnea, it's going to adjust. Uh, if you have a hypopnea, it's going to adjust. And sometimes these adjustments that the machine is making actually wake you up. Uh, so what I would encourage you to do is if you do have a very wide range of pressure over over a period of time, along with your doctor, uh, try to, to see if you can narrow those pressures via looking at the report. So the report tells you what pressure you run at most of the time. Even though your machine may be set four to 20, your most common pressure, uh, sorry, sorry about the dollars, but your more, more common pressure may actually be, let's say 10. And then you could through your doctor's prescription, have that changed to eight to 12, for example, and then there aren't as many uh, changes. Now, another thing to keep in mind is that as we get older, let's say we're over 50 years old, it's just common to wake up. So you may wake up just because you're in the older age bracket. And, uh, you know, as long as you're able to go back to sleep, it's perfectly fine and normal. It's the uh, it's a problem really only if you're waking up and then unable to go back to sleep. So that's uh, that's number five is awakenings. So adjust the pressure, try to narrow that gap. And then also just know that it's normal to wake up. Also, you know, if you don't drink as much uh a couple of hours before you go to bed. Obviously, you don't have to use the restroom as many times, so that could be helpful. All right, let's move on to number four. Number four is eye irritation. Uh, I've seen some pictures in our Facebook group, CPAP for Beginners, of people with really puffy eyes and problems with, with eye irritation, eye dryness. Uh, this almost always is someone that's using a full face mask, a, a mask over your nose and mouth, and likely it's not actually sized correctly or it just may be the shape of your nose uh, if it's not sized correctly obviously you need to get the correct size have that looked at again have them actually use a size meter or gauge to determine uh, when you're using a sizing gauge and we do have those on our website uh, that you can print out cut it out on paper and then it will show you you want the top part of the gauge to be right here where the lowest portion, you know, where it sort of drops right there in between your, your eyes. That's the top part of the gauge. The bottom part of the gauge is under your lip right here where it drops the lowest. So you're just measuring this distance from here to here to determine do you need a small, medium or large full face mask. So that's number one. Make sure it's the correct size mask. Otherwise, you're going to just have a little bit. It doesn't even take much air leakage, but just a little bit of leakage coming out right here will actually cause a lot of air to irritate the eyes, cause some swelling, puffiness, etc. Another solution for that with the eye irritation is possibly you just simply uh, could try 
nasal pillows, you know, that or or even a hybrid type of mask that's the nasal pillows and the full face. But trying different things is really important. So that might be the solution is to just try a hybrid mask or nasal nasal pillows. So let's move on to number three. Number three, I hear a lot is dry mouth. So people who have dry mouth, that's happening likely because you may only have a nasal mask uh, or nasal pillows and your mouth is actually coming open while you sleep at night. Now, that that's more of a problem beyond just the dry mouth, because if your mouth is coming open while you're trying to use CPAP, then obviously what's going to happen is the air goes in your nose. It goes right out your mouth and it completely dries out your mouth. But even beyond that, you're no longer getting the pressure where you need it. So not only do you have a dry mouth if your mouth's coming open, but you're also wasting your time trying to use CPAP because there's no pressure. The point of CPAP is to apply and maintain a pressure in your airway that will keep your airway open um, even while you're you're trying to sleep. Now, some solutions for dry mouth is uh, I think one, the first and most obvious is if your mouth is coming open while you're sleeping, you've got to keep it closed or use a full face mask over your nose and over your mouth. So if you have just a nasal mask or nasal pillows, your mouth's coming open, possibly just use a full face mask instead. Or if you don't want to use a full face mask, try a chin strap. So a chin strap is simply you can still use the nasal apparatus, put the chin strap on and that will keep your mouth closed. And by the way, a lot of people do use chin straps along with full face mask and that's fine too. Uh, the point is really you have to sort of try different things and think through different things and, and solutions for yourself. All right. Number two, this is a huge side effect that people do see. It's called aerophagia. It simply means air in your stomach. So the trachea, it, it, when you're using your CPAP and the air pressure is coming in, uh, we want it to go into your airway and into your lungs. Uh, however, we do not want that air to go into your esophagus. So swallowing air is something that some people do through the night while using CPAP. And as you're swallowing that air, it's just going into your stomach, getting trapped in there. It can cause some problems. It can cause uh, pain in the stomach, uh, even pain in the chest area. Uh, it can obviously cause you know gas and different problems such as that. We want the air to stay in the trachea and in the airway and in the lungs and really neck position is very important. So if your if your neck is down like this, then you're more likely to have the air go into your trachea. So some people you actually use a soft collar, a soft collar uh, like people would use after a, a car crash, you know, with the neck problems and that will maintain your neck in the proper position. Uh, then sometimes moving the pillow and adjusting the pillow in the proper place can actually make a difference in this aerophagia. Another solution is possibly if along with the doctor changing the prescription for a lower CPAP pressure, if that is feasible, uh, often that's not feasible, but, um, but, you got to figure something out. And if, if none of those solutions work, then BiPAP. So BiPAP is just an opportunity to a machine that can change the pressure, higher pressure when you're inspiring and a lower pressure when you're exhaling. And every time you take a breath, the pressure of the machine changes. And this actually makes a huge difference, not only in compliance overall, it can reduce aerophagia. Uh, it can reduce mask leaks. BiPAP is a really good solution for many of the problems that you're having. So check with your doctor if you're having a lot of problems and you've struggled through CPAP. Talk to your doctor about it because perhaps BiPAP is, is a potential solution for you. And then number one, I bet you guys who have used CPAP for a long time can answer the question of what the number one most common problem is. It actually is mask leaks. Mask leaks are often the culprit, the problem with CPAP. And uh, mask leaks is one that is probably the hardest to overcome as well. Mask leaks can happen through so many different problems, uh, size of mask, type of mask, style of mask, the way you sleep. Do you sleep on your back, your stomach, your side, or 
Do you sleep on all of the above? Uh, mask leaks is something that really just through your provider, talk to them, explain to them what the problem is that you're having. And often uh, an experienced provider will be able to help you with that. And I'm here, by the way, you can see on our website, I have uh, an item in the website to where you can contact me. Um, you actually schedule a phone conversation with me and I'd be more than happy to try to solve some problems with you. So check that out on affinityhm.com. If you would type in comments what your problem is that you're having, I'd like to try to answer that or perhaps some others can. Join us on Facebook. We have a really awesome group over there. It's called CPAP for beginners and uh, i'd love to see you over there in that group we're having a good time answering qu questions and supporting people who are having problems with their cpap so if you would please subscribe to this channel if you're watching on youtube like the page if you're watching on facebook and i uh, appreciate you guys being here tonight and i hope you have a wonderful evening and it's time to go to bed here so uh so good night everybody y'all have a good night bye-bye See you soon.